However, as I promised you before we went on the break, I told you I have with me a very fantastic, enlightened, and um, erudite guest. <laughs> yes, I have with me Honorable Ibrahim Babajide Obanikuru, who is the House of Reps member representing Ethiosa in Lagos. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you for having me here. <clears throat> yes. Thank you for joining us here as well. Thank you. Uh, so the PVC Loud, just a brief, you know, the PVC Loud is a program that seeks to, you know, enlighten young Nigerians out there on how to use that PVC. We, we understand that our vote is our power, but how do we exercise this vote? Who do we exercise it for? And when? The, you know, the intricacies of electioneering and politics and governance, what we try and you know, communicates with people over here. And we know that you're also contesting again to go back to the House of Representatives. Um, but to start with, let us know who you are. You know, tell us your background, what you study, you know, this kind of thing. Are you married? Are you single? Uh, thank you. I am Representative Ibrahim Babajide Obanikoro has introduced. Uh, born and bred into the family of, in Lagos here, into the family of Obani Koro of Lagos Island and Banjoko of Ikorodu. Now, I uh, went to a few primary schools, but the last one I attended was St. Saviour's, a Butemeta in railway compound. And then from there, I proceeded to the prestigious King's College. You know, then we had two secondary schools in Nigeria, King's College <laughs> and the rest. So, Floret to all the King's men <laughs> listening. And uh, after my school start, I proceeded to the United States, where I bagged uh, BSc in political science and a minor in criminal justice. And from there, I proceeded to do my master's in uh, at Page University. I mastered in public administration. And uh, that's my education background. And um, while in school, for, I, I, went for, I purposely went to school to get myself up for today because I knew that one day I was going to double into politics. And, um, in it, while growing up, at first, I had wired myself to be a civil servant because at the time, we had military government. So mm -hmm. I thought that uh, when I grow up, for me to contribute my quota to my nearest environment, I have to be a civil servant. You have to be a soldier. I didn't want to be a soldier, <laughs> but I knew I wanted to be a civil servant. Because mm -hmm. at the time, you know, the hand to mouth gesture was what, uh, you know, got my attention from beggars growing mm. up. And it, in a way, shaped my, how I decided to, you know, walk my path in life. Of course, you can't take credit away from my father, who was a huge um, impact on me growing up. A circle of friends as well. Majority of them were politicians of astute. Today, if you look at them, well-established politicians, some are late, majority are alive. So they contributed to my decision to go into uh, politicking or politics rather. And back in university, I was also active I, with uh, student politics. I got elected into the office of the treasurer of the African Student Association, the largest uh, school association at the time. Mm. And then I also eventually became, in my senior year, I became the president of that association by election as well. So I've been, you know, working the part of uh, uh, preparing, yourself. preparing myself for today. Uh, and then I came back in 20, 2006. I moved back to, the, to Nigeria and I did my NYSC as required by, by law. I worked a bit in the private sector with uh, Zenit Bank for about two years after service. And then I decided to go into farming, which has always been a thing that I had uh, a huge flair for. And I'm still into farming as well today. Today I've gone from just fishing to having, you know, uh, rams and cows and what have you mm. that we rear at the farm. So as much as I serve Etiosa, 110%, I still give 2% or some percentage <laughs> to my personal business. So that is, uh, That's interesting. Well, I'm a family man, happily married uh, with children. And, um, that's you know, me at the surface. Hopefully before the end of the interview, 
you get to know more about myself. That's, that's great. That's great. So, fully a Tiosa man. He also goes into fishing, which is a, <laughs> an a Tiosa thing. Yep, you are surrounded by water, that's the great ocean, and the lagoon. That's great to know. That's great to know. So, I mean, you were in the PDP. Yes, I was. This was what, 2011? I was in PDP from 2006 till about wow. 2018. 2018? Yes. Wow. So, why did you leave the PDP? I left PDP because there was no direction in PDP anymore. I thought that the leadership of the PDP did not embrace young coming politicians. They did not give us the needed support mm. to achieve your, your goal. Even though you had the desire, you had the drive, there was no push. So I felt it was time for me to, to it was either I remain and not be able to achieve anything or jump ship. And Alhamdulillah, I did jump ship, and today we are where we are. And you think that APC is a better platform for you to in all, achieve your in goal? In all fairness, yes, I believe the APC is a better platform for you to grow as a young man in politics. That's interesting. So you, you have sat in the, in the house now for about four years. Can you just give us, you know, tell us the things you have done for ATOSA people I've in served, those four years? I have served in the house for three years, okay, four three months years. today. It's going to be four years next year. I know it feels like eternity, but it's just <laughs> three years and four months. Well, um, we've been able to do what is required of us in Etiosa, at the National Assembly. You know, there is the legislative aspect of it, and then there is the political aspect mm. of it as well. On the legislative aspect of it, we've been able to move three bills, and those bills are bordering how to better ourselves as a people. One of them is touching uh, human rights, how we treat ourselves, treat ourselves better. You know, how police treat criminals, mm. how jungle justice issue. Another one borders on penalties, because Nigerians, all of us, for some reason, we are above the law. And, and that is because the penalties for our offenses are nothing to write home about. So we need to make them more strict so that people would uh, be scared or they will uh, shy away from being repeat offenders. So the other one is telling the federal government to increase some of the penalties that are being awarded to offense. Do you think the penalty issue is an enforcement issue? Because even the ones that are there Pen right now... Pen uh, Pen uh, penalties uh, are part of the enforcement. Right. When you know that you are, you know, you're, the penalty for an offense is beyond your capacity, you shy away from it. So, but because people know that I'm going to get away with it, mm. and even if they catch me, it's just a slap on my wrist. So, mm. that is some of the uh, bills that we have moved. And we've also moved various motions. The first motion I moved on the floor of the house was a motion to rehabilitate the barracks. Because we realized that Etiosa has majority of the barracks. No other constituency has more barracks than Etiosa mm -hmm. in the entire federation. Mm. So, and most of them are not in a conducive uh, environment. And I thought that for our policemen to operate insane with sanity, it's good for them to come home, have a place they'll call home where they can relax, sleep comfortably, and go back to work the next day ready to work. <music>